Hey guys, welcome back to the Mind Body Broadcast with Austin and Marty. And today we are going to talk about some pitfalls of common nutrition strategies. So before we get into this, we you know we want to mention that all types of styles or strategies have merit somewhere for somebody, uh, whether it's ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting or high carbs, low fat, or, or whatever it is, all of them have their place. We just simply want to touch on some common pitfalls that might uh, that you might want to watch out for if you're if you are using a specific strategy or that might actually deter you from using it at all, whether it's psychological or nutritional. Um, there are some definitely glaring pitfalls in both categories that we want to touch on. Absolutely, like I've I've was a big keto advocate I would say around 2012 for myself and you've probably seen this a lot too Austin where someone will go to a fitness seminar or they'll read a new book and before you know it they're implementing it with all their clients well that just because you feel great on a certain diet does not mean that your clients will feel great on a certain diet now that you have a another tool in toolbox sure you could try it out with them but if they're not getting what you're getting out of it and, and 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 they are giving you that feedback saying you know what this is just not for me say like, oh horse shit you're gonna feel great in a week or two you've got the keto flu the test flu or whatever <laughs> it's like no uh there, there's going to be other strategy or strategies for them that's going to make them feel significantly better than the kind of what uh, you're going into and so as we've been pounding into your as heads for the past Oh, what, two, three months now is that the, the diet strategy that works the best is going to be the one that you follow, of course, and then the, everything else is kind of secondary after that. But but if you absolutely uh, hate uh, higher fat foods and things like that, ke ketogenic dieting is probably not going to be for you. It's just as an example, I'm not we're not trying to pick on keto too hard here. But so then even even something having an abundance of carbohydrates where your diet is lower fat, like if you are into olive oil and, and Greek salads and things like that, and that's really a part of your life, that might not be the best dieting choice for you. And that's and it's interesting you bring that up because that is that's almost purely psychological. So even if somebody, mm -hmm. you know, even if somebody did well on a ketogenic diet, let's say, um, you know, I have a client they do well on it, their body responds and they feel good on it, but they absolutely hate it. Like you know, they're they're stressed that they dislike the food that much, and you know what I mean, and they and they don't like their meals that much. And and granted, you know, if it's a situation where they're two weeks out from a show and it's just they don't like it because they're not eating very much, then that's one thing. But if it's, you know, uh, general fat loss or early in a prep or even an off season, there's no reason that you have to do you have to use a style or a uh, specific strategy that you hate. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's mm -hmm. not that's not going to be good for adherence. And even if you do adhere there's no reason to be miserable because whether or not you, you realize it, that is stressful. Um, it is accumulating stress. I mean, you're like, oh, I got to eat this meal again that I absolutely hate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, so that's that's a definite factor in how I would look at somebody's, you know, how I would want to approach somebody's nutrition. And then uh, let's go in. Let's go ahead and go into some specific ones because we mentioned – you know, we were talking about keto, so we'll just jump into that one first, and because it's uh, it's a hot topic, I think. Yeah. It's sure. Yeah. So it had, I think it had fallen out for a while. It's it's like a lot of other strategies where they've been around for a long time, they get some momentum, and then you know a lot of people are like, "Wow, keto's stupid. You need carbs." Blah blah blah. And now keto's huge, just like fasting. People are like, "Well, if you fast, you'll lose all your muscle," and now everybody freaking fast yeah you know what i mean yeah, so sure do um, so with the ketogenic diet i think a lot probably the biggest the biggest issue is that you need to know how to set it up and if you're you know if you're working with a coach obviously hopefully they know how to set it up but if you're doing it yourself um, there are some things that i see as issues i mean you do need to be tracking your fat intake for god's sakes i uh -huh. mean people you know it's like oh i'm it, maybe it's in an off season setting and they, or they're not dieting for a contest or whatever. And they're just like, oh, I'm following a ketogenic diet. 
but they're not tracking their fat. Well, for one, fat is extremely calorically dense. Mm. So most people don't need to eat three, four, five thousand calories worth of fat a day uh, because you well, you just don't have those metabolic demands. So yeah, I mean, probably I'd say probably not tracking fat intake is probably the biggest pitfall that I see with ketogenic diet. Yeah, it, it is. It is too. Or, or, or so not not tracking the the fat content and then not paying attention to the quality of the fat content, right? Because I I remember reading the anabolic diet, or then that, that became the the metabolic solution back in the day, and I remember him blatantly stating in the book. Uh, you can eat steak and cheese for your meals. And I was like, really? All right. So, and I just remember my, my, my chest feeling tight <laughs> after about a good two or three weeks. I'm like, this is not something I should be feeling this early on, but it was just, it was just too much. Right. It was the, the, there was, I was no, uh, polyunsaturated. There was no like seeds. There was no, um, olive oils, no coconut, coconut oil. So there was, I, I just didn't feel healthy. And there in turn, it doesn't matter how good the, the diet is. If I don't feel healthy, I'm not going to train great. I'm not going to sleep great. So therefore, that's all going to cascade and, and kind of lump into into one thing. So I've done some form of either, we'll call it bodybuilding keto, which is the higher protein, medium fat, low carb. Or I've even done the original, we'll call it the true keto diet, which is the high fat, uh, medium to low protein to uh, very low to no carbs and it's it's just not for me my energy does not feel good i've got clients i diet with that and they love it and that's cool but it's it's just not for not for me and i yeah i i like that you brought up quality too because ketogenic diets if you look at them through like a, in a therapeutic sense they you know they've been used in medicine to treat um certain diseases because they they are by nature anti-inflammatory um, and have health benefits in that regard. But you could also make them extremely inflammatory mm. depending on. And that's and that's what appeals to a lot of people about a ketogenic diet is that they see so and so advertised that they're eating, you know, cheese and bacon and whatever else. And that's the only fat sources they're eating. Well, it's like, well, that's ridiculously inflammatory. The ratio of fatty acids is horrible um you're probably taking in trans fats and you know all that garbage so that that completely defeats all therapeutic value you have no <laughs> no benefit in that regard and now you're actually going to be more inflamed um just because of the garbage fats that you're taking in so yeah i mean quality and i think that's a trap that people fall into with if it fits your macros also you know that's oh yes that's, and, and that, so that'll, we, that'll that'll be our segue, Austin. <laughs> yeah, you know, let's, and we'll segue into that because yeah. that, as far as food quality goes, that's man. I, people if, are no you know what you know what here. I'll stop you and I'll ask you this: If you had to Go say ahead. the one thing that would be would either either crush if it fits your macros, or we'll say slingshot it up to being a very helpful, useful tool for the dieting industry, would you say it's that the selection of the foods? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, me I mean, too, why, man. Yeah. And it's and that's for a couple of reasons because you mentioned performance in the gym. That's a big one, obviously, because you know, we need to we need to eat things that don't make us sluggish, that digest well, that aren't highly inflammatory, um, that make us feel good so we can perform good. That's number one. Uh secondly are are just the effects on health. I mean being systemically inflamed on a regular basis is probably one of the worst things for your health. Oh, hands buddy. down. You nailed it. Can you go into that a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah. So I would say, I would say stress and systemic inflammation because those two things really go hand in hand a lot of the time um, are probably hands down the worst things for your health. I mean, they and inflammation is going to contribute to, you know, growth of disease in your body, essentially, and growth of any other kinds of issues, whether that's just making you feel crappy, whether it's inflammation in your gut and causing digestion issues, maybe in your joints and causing um, arthritic type symptoms or whatever it is. So um, food selection 
when you're using, if it fits your macros or flexible dieting or whatever you want to call it is massively important. I mean, you can't, and like we talked about in the episode that we actually did on if it fits your macros, the whole intent wasn't for people to try to fit as much garbage food into your plan. And, you know, it's funny because I actually saw a, uh, I saw a post about this that somebody took, you know, they took his, they were basically eating junk food or whatever and they did blood work. Okay. But they were, they were losing body fat and they were using if it fits your macros. And their point was that they wanted to show that certain blood markers were going to improve regardless of food selection. Mm -hmm. But the issue, the issue with that is there's a lot of things in terms of inflammation that aren't going to show up on a metabolic panel or your lipids or your thyroid or any of those things that you're commonly checking on blood work. So, uh, I mean, I've had people that I know for a fact that their stress and their stress and their body's inflamed and in and, and turmoil and their blood work looks fine. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, inflammation, man. I would say for if it fits your macros, that is that's probably the biggest thing is just you need to make sure that you're eating foods that that agree with you, that make you feel good. And that's not to say that you can't fit in some some processed stuff here and there. I see absolutely no problem with that whatsoever, but yeah, me, it has neither. To, me neither. You're right. You know, it has to be a balance. I mean, I'll be honest, like in my prep right now, I, I don't have many calories to work with, obviously, but B- um, bikini, bikini girl macros starring Austin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, like for my refeeds, for example, the carb, the carb sources that I'll use are, it's just a mix of traditional and maybe not so traditional. I'll use things like I'll have a couple meals of rice, a couple meals of potato, and then I really, really like these um, Quaker brand white cheddar rice cakes. I'm addicted to them. So I'll eat I eat them in two, you know, in two of the meals, I'll eat an entire or almost like an entire sleeve of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, they don't bother me at all. They digest I mean it's just rice and some cheddar powder essentially yeah uh so yeah and, and they do i do fine with it um, i have a couple other little weird things that i like that i'll implement here and there and yeah i mean i don't see i don't see any issues with stuff like that uh, but when it's 75 percent of your food selection are processed inflammatory foods uh, i do see that as an issue and it's not the other things that you don't think about are when you are consuming stuff that has a lot of a lot of additives and stuff in it. And I'm, I'm not like the preservative police or anything here, but you have to understand, too, that our bodies are made to rid of toxins like we're made to get rid of all that stuff. But if you give it enough of it we're not going to be able to keep up. No, that that's exactly it. Right. It's just just like when uh, uh, I'll, I'll give a good good example. I'll give that of actually of good foods is there's still this um, I don't know if I'll call it a mantra or a stigma floating around of vegetables are free on prep, and so you yeah right, and so you see these people with bags decimating bags of broccoli. Oh, because coach said unlimited vegetables. It's the whole give them an inch, take a mile thing. But before you know it, it's like what's going on? They're like, oh, you know, about meal three, I just start getting really puffy, bloated. I'm like, I, I like, I got to poop, but it's usually a fart. And it's like, okay, what are you doing? And you have them get them the food journal and the amount of broccoli or green beans or cauliflower. It's like, oh, and so you, that that's almost the, the reverse. You know what I mean? If you let them go and let's say let them go, if, if, if you aren't seeing what they're eating for that stuff, um, anything could cause that digestion inflammation. And it's, and that is so touchy and, and to get that back. Can, can sometimes not be the easiest in the world either. So that's something to look out for. Yep, I agree. It's I have a gal right now that uh, she – it's a perfect example. She does a macro plan. We have, we have the macros. We've talked about food selection. She knows how to lay them out throughout the day, like how to, you know, how to time the carbs and the fat and all that good stuff. But she, you know, threw a couple different foods in. Um, she's prepping right now and she's really in tune with the feedback. So she, Good. she threw a couple different foods in reported to me. He's like, Hey, I'll be honest. Like my weight's up a little bit today. And I'm bloated. I tried this and this food. I did not like it. I'm getting rid of it immediately. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's not, it's just a little bit of trial and error sometimes. And you have to, 
you have to obviously pay attention. I think that people think just because, yeah, caloric value and macro value is the same, that it's okay when they're disregarding the fact that it's wrecking their GI track and they are bloated and look like it, crap. It, it has been such a thing for this. And, and I've gotten, I don't know if I've shared this on this podcast or not. And if I haven't, cool, let's bring up, let's bring on the slander. It's a little bit of, a little bit of a side note here, but because of that, because of how processed, refined, whatever we, you want to pick for your foods, I think that this has one of the bigger things to do with, how we have this not only just distended guts like to the side like yes that is i know more food it is potentially uh, improper use of insulin and other things however like the hanging out obliques over to the sides i question anybody to find better or it, it doesn't need to be perfect but better options for their digestion and i will guarantee you because i've seen it now with six out of six i know i don't have that big of a case study but the six out of six if i get them to follow foods that are better for them like you said not have the same macronutrient and micronutrient profile but the food just digests easier in their belly does not give them any kind of uh digestive we'll call it digestive grief and their 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 oblique starts shrinking they start getting that smaller waist now it's not going to alter your friggin' rib cage but i'm talking about the ones with the, with the with the obliques that seem to hang over over top like it's uh like an apron and I've seen it go away with 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 proper proper ab training and with with eating better. So that if that girl that you're talking about, if she just goes, mm, this this food just isn't for me. That is genius, and that's so hard to teach, isn't it, Austin? Just to say, like I know it's a healthy food, but it's not a healthy food that works for your digestive tract at least right now. Maybe we could yep. get the enzymes back later. Like, it's, are you in a prep or are we in an off season? Off season, you can have a little bit of chance more. But if like if I have a client that says around meal three, um, yeah, this is what's happening. I get like it gurgles in the stomach and then 30 minutes later I'm farting. I don't feel good. I'm like, well, then there's something probably in meal three or the meal before that that we got to take a look at and just just remove. Not 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 ditch the whole meal because that's that's like the baby with the bathwater. But maybe it's maybe it's some stupid sugar free condiment. Maybe it's maybe it's oats now and oats, you now have a resistance to just because of that. And that happens more often than not, too. I bet you've seen is that foods that you start out with. OK, at the beginning of prep. You start to lose the enzymes the more along you go into the prep. Have you found that? Yeah, and you not only have I found that, but what you said about good or clean or healthy foods is that's important because I kept saying process, process, process when really it's not. It could be it could literally be anything. You mm -hmm, know, it mm -hmm. could be it could be broccoli, it could be oats. Then those are two common ones oh, actually. Yeah, like, and and I, I've had oats. I, I was just talking to Justin Harris on the phone. Hi, Justin, about last week. And um, he was using it, and you, 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 you probably either know this and find this is interesting too. He said for peak week, he said what I'll do is I'll have them have oatmeal in the morning so that it fills them up because it messes things up. He goes, yeah, they might be a little bit farty, but either and he said not doing that much, and at least they don't have white rice. Whereas twenty minutes later they're they're starving. He goes, I'll give them something knowing it's gonna bloat them off a little bit, and then by the Wednesday Thursday. I will take it out and put it in lieu of something that's better, easier on the digestive tract for their carbs. And that blew my mind. You like using bloat to your advantage. I thought that was so cool because, because like, because it, it's not going to uh, destroy anything. Right. But it's just going to hang around and make you feel a little bit more puffy for a bit. That's, that's, yeah, that's brilliant, actually. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that, I was like, I was like, he's, he's one of my favorite, favorite Austin, yeah, Justin Harris, he's just got an answer yeah. for anything, and man, is he's, he's way ahead of a lot of, uh, a lot of us in terms of what, how he uses his strategies for peak week and things, like, I can't say enough good things about uh, Justin out there, so I hope you hear that, buddy, because, yeah, man, you've been very instrumentational in my, uh, how to load both men and women for, for a peak week, yeah, for sure. And that's and that's also a, a cycle. One of the psychological things there too is they feel For fuller, sure. they yep. feel whatever. So, uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a good tip. And one thing before we get too far away from it, sure, because we you started to touch on it a little bit, is segue into this is going to segue us into two topics. We'll finish the if it fits your macros here, and then I want to touch on fasting protocols. So, um, volume of meals okay. is the yep. amount you know. And this is, and this goes with if it fits your macros, of course, because you have the freedom to use these different types of foods. Uh, I and it this this I've seen go really, really south 
with people um, as far as they are, you know, they, they know a lot about the foods in terms of macronutrient content. They, they get really experiment with things a lot and they get this, it's almost like a game. Like they, let's see how much volume I can fit in this meal. It starts off. Oh yeah. Keep going. Yep. Yep. Okay. And and this happens a lot. It starts off as, and this is outside of, this is outside of lowering meal frequency because then you get people that, and I'll go through the sequence of normally how it goes is they'll start off with, well, I can, you know, I don't really get much volume when I eat, uh, what else? Let's see when I eat oats, you know, I only get this little bit, this little bowl of oats. I don't really like that. So I'm going to use, you know, I'm going to use something else that I get a little bit more volume and I'm going to start eating. It's like, Oh, look, I can eat this popcorn. That's cool. I'm going to eat this popcorn. Okay. So now I get the whole bag, whatever. And it's like, well, I saw somebody making this protein fluff online. So I'm going to try out this protein fluff. Right. So now they have, you know, now they have a mixing bowl full of protein fluff. That's still the same macros. And they're like, well, I saw that you could actually put guar gum in your protein fluff to thicken it more and get more volume. You, you said gu- you said guar gum, right? Yeah. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Gum yep. Or yep, yep. Just making sure control. I heard you right. Yep. And now they're like, Man, I I have like a five pound bowl of you know whatever your fluff or pudding or whatever the heck you're calling it, and next thing you know, it's like a sick game of how much can I fit into these meals, and then the GI havoc starts happening. Um, it gets you know you're pulling normally the volume in these meals normally it's coming in the form of water just because. Yeah. That's that's really the only way to volumize the meal more is that they're pulling more water into it, whether it's the food itself yep. or fluid that you add to the you know to the foods. Um, it's it gets really problematic because now you're watering down all the digestive acids. Your meals are overlapping grossly because your body just can't it can't digest uh, in the amount of time. So now you have someone doing this and they're like, well man, I can get this much into a meal. So what if I only eat two meals in the day now instead of four or five? How much could I fit into my meals now? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So now we're now we're treading in the – we're getting into like a starve and binge cycle essentially. They're still hitting their macros granted, but it's getting to the point where it's definitely a psychological – It's it is a psychological issue at this point. And I yes. had – Yes. And this is – and this is with if it fits your macros, and I see it even more with fasting protocols because by default, if with fasting protocols, you are eating a lower meal frequency. You know, maybe you're doing intermittent fasting, and you're eating, uh, you know, two meals in your eating in your feeding window or whatever. Maybe three meals tops. So you, now you have somebody that they're only eating two meals. They know how to volumize their meals. They're only eating in a, you know, four hour window or whatever. Yep. And they are literally just destroying their GI tract in that four hour window through all of the fluid, through the processed junk that they're eating, through the amount of volume that they're eating, through stretching out their stomach, um, then just feeling awful at mm-hmm. this point. So mm-hmm. it's, I, I see it as a, big problem like i have people ignore it too but i I mean i've had a discussion with a few people i'm like man you got to stop like we need to and i hate to say it but we need to get you back to some quote unquote bro foods for a while and clean this shit up (laughs) so austin when did that come uh, come around because i this is how uneducated i am on the topic i i remember when if uh intermittent fasting came around i remember seeing you know the 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 16 and 8 cool the the 18 and 6 i was like you know what this could be cool but then i started seeing the 20 and 4 and then i started seeing pictures a lot of along the same lines as the i i f y m crowd and i and i was like this is starting to take off its own bastard angle Versus that, so not only when did that start happening? Because I like, like, geez, man, that kind of snuck up on me. Yeah, I don't know. I know you had uh, lean gains. You know that was the yeah, original with, with, Mar- with Martin for like, sure. Yeah, I would say that's probably one of the original, or at least the guy that popularized it. Not that because fasting wasn't obviously like a new thing. People have been doing it for religious purposes for God knows how long. But uh, yeah, I would say that was probably the biggest thing, and then. 
I don't know. You know, I really don't know where people thought that it would be better to do other like longer windows. I mean, I do think there are therapeutic purposes of it doing it on occasion. Like, you know, I have somebody do a somebody that's eating 6000 calories and we need to do a 24 hour fast every two weeks because they just have to to reset type of thing. But I don't know where the idea of doing a like I think there was one called the warrior diet or something. It was one meal a day. Oh, yes. Yeah. Was, was this a lot of uh, carrots in like I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know what the food was, but I think it was something like it was something like one meal a day. So I mean one meal a day you're doing a you know what are you going to do a 22 hour fast every day essentially yeah. and you're going to eat one meal, but the idea behind this just like intermittent fasting was that you're still meeting your macros, you know what I mean? So you have to like common sense would tell you if I'm eating 200, you know, we'll just give random numbers, 200 grams of protein, 300 grams of carbs and 50 grams of fat in one meal. That cannot be good. No, that's right. Let's just think about it logically. Like I know people think about it. Think about people that go out and have a free meal and they're and they are hitting those kinds of numbers. You don't feel good. You don't, your body does not process that. I mean, now let's do it through maybe a little bit better foods even. And you got to, you got to understand like the massive havoc that you're wreaking on that like hour of just power shoving food down your gullet. So <laughs> yeah, I don't I have no idea. Like I, I don't know, I guess somebody, maybe they did have those kind of like disordered thought process where, man, we can, we can really, you know, cram a lot of food and then it turned into like i said for the wrong people that turns into an eating disorder i mean it turns into yeah. binging and restricting is exactly what happens yeah no and that's exactly you know we could we could go a little bit into that too uh just because of the the psychological um the, how, how the food plan when i mean food plan i should say the style of dieting can create the the uh, eating disorder itself, or at least the eating disorder tendencies, right? Um, it, it's it, I, I've seen if it fits your macros when people start getting too obsessed with calculating things, and now before you know it, they feel like that's running their lives, and then that gets kind of scary there because they're always trying to uh, plan, and and they'll start losing their minds if they don't have two fats on or their three carbs off. So that's never the the, the right thing to kind of to kind of go into and then exactly then for the uh, intermittent fasting they're almost like planning their 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 window down to a t it's not it's not like we don't plan us of us of us those of us that kind of will say eat on a more split even schedule but the, it, everything has its has its pitfalls in in a sense so right but it, i find that now some of the we'll call them the modern dieting tactics can be uh i'll say more results driven in the beginning with but i don't necessarily know if people know the full ramifications of the of the the, the mental and the emotional consequences even a couple months down the road yeah that's and that's just it man it does with like anything else you know because we're talking about psychological stuff is it does it starts with good intentions you know intermittent fasting maybe starts as Hey, this works better with my schedule because of work or whatever, or I'm just not that hungry in the morning. So this is really appealing to me, um, you know, or, or whatever, you know, whatever the reason is, or IIYFM or flexible dieting. They're like, yeah, I do like to fit in some of these foods here and there. And that's cool. It'll help me adhere to my diet. And as a coach, we're like, great. Right. But then, yeah, it does. It does turn into a lot of other, you know, negative things. And, if you are, you know, if you are working with a coach, hopefully that you're giving that kind of honest feedback of if there's something, you know, some kind of problem or, or you have a coach that pays attention to you and is making sure that those things uh, aren't happening. Because, I mean, I've had people that done intermittent fasting and stuff and they're like, man, it's just like I'm getting a little anxious. You know what I mean? There's like, My anxiety is going up. I'm, I'm worried about, you know, how what I'm going to eat and maybe I've tried to get too fancy with my macros and now I'm like well always trying to figure out new foods and I'm getting really obsessive about it and then for me that's a sign that we need to you know we need to pull things back and we need to simplify them it may be just for a brief period 
Yep. But but nonetheless, you know, that's not that's not a cue to keep going. And it's and it could be the other way around. I mean, it could be that they're doing the whole monotonous five to six meals a day thing and they hate that and, and they feel really good with intermittent fasting. So, I mean, it goes I mean, it certainly goes both ways. Yeah, I, I love that you said that one of my one of my uh, better friends out here named Brian Cron knocked knocked a, a, a Facebook post out of the park about this about about simplicity too, and uh, I don't know if you read it or not, but he was talking about how how he was watching a documentary on one of the, wor- the world's best chefs, I think Anthony Boudouin or Boudouin or it was it was it was phenomenal, oh. saying he's gone all around the world doing doing these. He, fancy snobby stuck up food stuff and he said he came full circle and he said like if you think friggin doritos taste great eat the friggin doritos right like who are we to say that this 200 stuffed caviar piece tastes better than your doritos you know what i mean and so he was talking about even this like if you've gone you've tried if it fits your macros you've tried intermittent fasting you've tried carb backloading you've tried this and then you know what i think i'll just like eating my breakfast maybe eating before training and probably having just enough before bed so I don't wake up. And I know, I'll tell you, I've come full circle because I've gone all the way around to try out these varying dieting styles and everything else. And just, uh, it, it, and so what, and what the guy did at the end, he said he, his favorite thing was going out for sushi, just fresh, fresh off the boat sushi with no, no extra condiments, no extra anything. Cause that was the beauty of it was just, it was so simple. It, it was so delicious, fresh fish right off the boat. And that's basically going back to, he tied that into the exercises and into the diet. He said, we just make this so damn complicated on ourselves. When if we were just get rid of so much of that esoteric crap, like, you know, wondering if it's a 16 and eight window versus a 18 and six window, just do, do you know how much easier that would be, man? If we just kind of put the diets and tiding style and fucking coast con- cruise control and like just yeah. and, and let it do and put it put it some. It's not like we're putting it at uh, 40 miles an hour, put it at 60, 65, 70 miles an hour and then focus on the damn training in the <laughs> Austin. Our yeah. perfect worlds would be great, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, and and normally what I'll say to people, too, is if we need to kind of back off and reevaluate is. Hey, let's let these things work in the background, you know, especially if they're hiring a coach like, hey, let us take care of it. Let your diet or your nutrition do its job in the background. Stop thinking about it. Just do it. Focus on something else in your life. For God's sake, you know, it don't. I mean, there's a point too where you become excessive, like or obsessive like that. And you think I think that it's important to just like I said, just let it do its thing. Be confident that what you're doing is working. And focus on other stuff for a little bit. Man. And, and, it, and it is like I try to get my my hobbies of my girls and my boys. I try to get the done. So, and I'll leave that list until something like four weeks out. And I'll go back to that. And I'll say like, so how is knitting going? And we're like, oh shit, I forgot all about that I knit right now. And, and, it's, and it's not, in, even if we don't, don't have someone that's perpetually thinking about food or ang- anxious about the show. Well, it gives them something that they know that they love. That can preoccupy their brain. And then, like you said, because I, I don't know many people outside of, like, the hardcore m- mantra that's out there is do the gym and that's it and think about the gym and just and visualize the gym. It's I, I've got it quite a bit better. Sorry, but not better. Quite a bit different of a recommend, recommendation in that regard is that I say get out. Do something, do go like active, like uh, go for walks or whatever, and just uh, think, think about what you like, read it, read some books, knit, uh, go do, do whatever, go float at the swimming pool if that's your thing, go do a little bit of yoga if it's not going to interfact or uh, interact with your, with your current training program. But I'll tell you, man, like if I didn't have my audio books during, during prep, like I just, cause that's where I get the, my absolute best learning done. And like, I have one right now that's talking about one of the best FBI negotiators in all of the world for like 40 years. And like, it, I, I blink and I'm like, damn, I wish I could listen to more cause cardio's done. Right. But like that, that, that's just an example of me. But like, if you, if you've got things like I, I know, I remember there was a, I think it was Jason Blaha for God's sake, who got a recumbent bike and did like three hours of cardio in front of his world of Warcraft. Cause that stuff works. Right. Especially if you don't want to be doing that exact exercise, you, in, in, you know, you've got two choices, complain or find a way to make it less complainier. 
<laughs> so that's uh, that's kind of my thoughts on there too. I do like to say, just as you said, is that to find other things that you still do enjoy that aren't going to derail your progress or your outcome. Yeah, it's and people think that they're not going to get as good a results because they're not like hyper focused on it being hardcore. I mean, it's somebody asked me every once in a while when I'm when I'm on the like doing cardio, I'll, I'll pop up like a live Facebook live video or something and just do like a. Q and a kills some time. Sure. Yeah. And good idea. <laughs> and people like to ask questions or whatever. So somebody asked me, what are some of the things I do to pass time during cardio? And I said, well, once in a while I'll answer emails and stuff, be- but I mean, I am not answering like full updates on my phone or anything, but, um, but honestly, like most of the time I, it's all completely unrelated to bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. I watch good. I watch videos or read stuff about, uh, it could be completely random stuff. Like I do have a couple other sports that I like. Like I really enjoy college and international wrestling. There you um, go. There's there you a go. Lot of, yeah. So I have a subscription to a streaming service that streams all the international wrestling events. Okay. So I, you know, I watch those or I, uh, literally I got on this kick where I was watching little snippets, reruns of pawn stars, the, show on and i was watching it on youtube okay mm-hmm. so com- completely random just what appealed to me at the moment um listen to different podcasts about stuff completely unrelated to bodybuilding and and lo and behold it hasn't affected my prep at all i'm still getting in shape <laughs> and, and i wasn't even thinking about bodybuilding it's because yeah. you don't have to like in between your meals if you I get it. Yeah, you get hungry, whatever you think about food, but your next meal is going to be there. You're going to eat it. You're going to train. You're going to do the cardio. It's like you don't have to think about those things when you're not doing them. Yeah. It's that's not that doesn't mean you're not hardcore or you're not going to get or get the results. Like you're still going to get if if anything, I'd argue that your results might be better because you're I would not argue that too. I would definitely argue that too. Yes. I truthfully think that in the last few years, I would say I've gotten way better at that component of learning how to let my my plan work in the background, you could say, and my results have been so much better. So like technically, I'm thinking about those things less. I'm still doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. And man, my results are so much better and, and I enjoy it so much more. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting concept. Well, because your your thinking's not breeding into obsession, right? And the obsession right. then 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 breeds into anxiety, and that's when uh, I, I will get people saying to me, "Hey, wh- what what restaurant can I go to post show at three weeks out?" And I'm like, "That's not something you should be thinking of." I'm sorry, like that's just you're you're living way into the future. Uh, it's it's well, uh, I don't want to use the term a problem, but it's definitely a hindrance to their current look uh, and then it's one of those things you can tell them that you, you or you can tell them that or you can tell that they are not they're currently missing out on the being lean now missing out on the, on the fun workouts now missing out, missing out on how they look now and before you know it they'll they'll have that blip and regardless of their pricing they'll look back and say well how was prep and the only thing they'll think is oh it was hard man like did you not enjoy any of those like three, four, five, six, seven weeks out photos in the gym when you're kicking, looking badass, you're full and pumped and other, and the, it's kind of foggy there, right? So I try to really, really, uh, you know, and I'll even say, hey, send me a picture at the gym or something like that. And so they'll go, whoa, I didn't know it looked like that. And just to really kind of bring them back away from the being uh, obsessed about something all the time, or I'll even make recommendations for audiobooks if I know what they're into. Podcasts are a great one now. You can find almost anything on podcasts to to download while you're doing your cardio and then uh just yeah i'm definitely telling them to to you know as be be as social as you can and what i mean by that is even just going to the gym with someone else to do cardio like the, that that can be the extent of your your social circle i know that i uh, can't always get through there but but we you can try your best right yeah no i i agree i think it's in the in we use prep as an example for stuff like this just because it's the easiest time to be most obsessive. But uh, it's another question I get asked a lot, and I encourage my clients to do this too, is live 
as regular as life as you can while you're prepping. And if it's if it is drastically different, that means your off season adherence probably sucked to begin with. If mm-hmm. you have to flip your life a 180, yeah. but let's assume that you do good in the off season, you are productive. You're still, you know, tracking your food and doing all that, you know, everything you should be. Uh, it's really not, and I and I always say this: it's not that big of a difference between prep and you know prep and off season. Granted, the last you know whatever weeks, yeah, you're really tired. You're probably gonna probably not going to want to go do a whole lot, but you Mm -hmm. know, I like my wife and I, we do, we literally try to keep our routine as normal as possible. As long as I can possibly keep my body functioning into a prep Mm -hmm. that literally up until like the last week where it's hard to, you know, tie my shoes type of thing. Right. We've, we've still done all the same stuff all the time just because I don't, I don't think about it. You know what I mean? It doesn't, I'm not sitting there obsessing over anything. It keeps everybody happy. Everyone's, you know, you enjoy the process a lot more. Um, and I think that everyone, would, if everyone would kind of think like that versus they have to hold a gun to their head all the time, you know, I think it would be, they could do a lot better. And then, and they would realize like, wow, I still got shredded. You know, I still got, I still got in shape. It's like how, and and I wasn't a complete um, OCD mess the whole time. Right. Yeah. So, but I know we're way off. We're way off on this. Is a two part episode, by the way, not intentionally, <laughs> but now it is. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, but uh, here we go. This is talking about this tier two, da, 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 Steve and Dave. Uh, so yeah, even even with the did you, did you talk about how the downfalls of if it fits your macros can turn into the binging and starving is pretty much it's a poster boy for it. Yeah. That's what, that's what we were talking about with Good. fasting and if it fits your macros. So Good. I would say that pretty much rounds out the two things with, with the fasting and if it fits your macros are food selection, quality, you know, quality of food selection, and then um, not turning it into a game to see how much volume of food you can eat and not, getting too carried away with your your fasting windows if it's causing some kind of sure, uh, sure. You know, bad response. And, and so then I'll add in too, to, you can pick any one of the more popular diets, like things that are still out there, such as paleo, such as um, whole, whole foods, plant-based, uh, things like that. And as long as the, 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 the way around it is as long as you know that you are going to be limiting yourself in certain food areas – but know that you still could have them if it does if it doesn't work can kind of save you because 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 there's a difference between you wandering around with that as a badge of honor going like oh I don't eat meat or oh I don't eat this versus knowing okay I can eat meat I can eat that but I'm making the personal choice to not want to and that's huge as opposed to saying oh Austin told me I can't well no Austin just gave you a plan for your goals Austin never once said eat this for the rest of your life because if not you're a terrible person. And, and so, it, and, and people kind of get, whoa, whoa, I never thought about that. It's like, because I, I, I started hearing that way too much in the gym being like, oh, well, Marty says I can't eat that. Or Marty says I can't eat that. I'm like, no, no, you go for it. Just don't expect to look good. And then that, that little mind flip just went, whoa. And so, and so, so you, he, sorry. No, go ahead. I, I have a question for you. And I know, I think I know what you're going to say. Sure thing. Go ahead. Yeah. But in 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 in, because a couple of the people would say like you know I don't know if I can be eating this forever and like of course when I had the limiting stuff that was more for during the prep or if it was limited it would be let's say if they had a horrible lactose intolerance problem I'd say listen I would limit your dairy or else you were gonna limit to uh, sorry you were not going to limit your amount of farts (laughs) and everything else from there but. They, they, I, I, I've written a little bit of a blog article on people that that really struggle with them being limited in foods, and I'm not a guy to tell people a set plan as in tilapia meal one, and then this at the meal. I like to give people meal plans with options, so I think there's quite a bit of variety there. So when I do see people cry the no variety, I'll say, okay, then don't eat it. What do you want to eat? And they're like, steak. I'm like, okay, have steak. But then you're going to have to do this and do this and going to have to tell me if your your stomach does well on steak. And they kind of look at me and go, oh, well, and I want ice cream. I'm like, well, then you really don't want to get in shape that bad. 
And that's kind of how the, that conversation will go. But just even giving them that power can help. I've also seen it in a very few rare, rare circumstances where they, they take it completely the wrong way because they're interpreting what I say so far off and left that they can't see the ball anymore. The grass is too high. But usually they can they can pick up what I'm putting down when I say that you have the ability to eat anything. It's your choice to pick the foods that you want for your goals and your physique. Yeah, it, and this is I do I literally do this all the time <laughs> to people oh, and good. they and it throws it throws people for a huge loop Such and it makes them, yeah. It makes them think. It's in a great example would be let's say they're uh they're going away on an extended weekend. Okay. I have maybe it's like, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they're going out of town or whatever. And I had they're in a fat loss phase and I already have maybe a free meal in their plan every week or something, maybe even two, depending on the person. And they're like, well, Hey, what if I, you know, I'm going out of town I'm then this and this and this. And I know that this person doesn't really have the luxury of eating like shit. And because they will, they won't get results. And right. that's just how they are. And they're like, well, what if I just ate freely Saturday and Sunday? And I'm like, <laughs> well, you're more than welcome to. I'm like, but just know that you are there will be some consequence to That's doing right. so and they're like wait so but i can i'm like sure yeah sure you can i mean and you're not going to be upset i'm like well i mean yeah i want you to get results but this is about you if and the fact is the fact of the matter is you should be upset with yourself if you aren't getting the results that you want but if it is the results that you're okay with that's fine. I said it's really comes down to what you are okay with. If you are okay with not getting the results, if you are okay with having with having to come back on Monday and clean up, you know, clean it up for a week and probably offset yourself for a week, then that's fine with me because we're all adults here. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, hey, this is, this is about you. It's not about me. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and play parent, but I'm just my job is to relay the information. I said, this is what is 100% ideal. This was what will give you the best results. But if you want to do plan B, just know there there is some content. Man, I'm going to cut you off. That's like, I love that. I I put up like, uh, one of one of my more popular blogs is called like uh, Mega Marty's Guide to like glamping, camping, and all those other fun filled things that you want to do with your summer with your buddies that can and, or might not in, uh, affect your progress. And just laid it out. It was almost it's not like one of those uh, you have French fries and you do thirty sit ups, but it was like one of those here is where you're going to meet yourself in the middle, right? It's like, if you want to have a Friday, Saturday off, you're probably going to have to have a little bit more of a harder dieting weeks during the week. And like, just all that stuff, just, just like you said, in terms of the, there's going to be the law of diminishing returns with the, the law of, or sorry, the amount of effort you're going to get. And you can kind of lay that out to them. And maybe it, it even takes a week or two of them going, Hey, what happened? Your weekends happened. That's what happened. Cause is it's uh, it's, it's not a, it's not just a, a game of what can I get away with? It's, it's what can, what can I maybe add in here and there to keep my social life or whatever up and still at the minimum, not lose progress, just kind of pull over on the side of the highway and hang out as opposed to the highway being the progress, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it does. And, and I think a lot of people need to realize too, that it's not, this isn't a punishment. You know what I mean? It's not the lifestyle isn't a punishment. And when people can realize that they do a lot better if they realize like I have people that they, they are perfectly fine with. Yeah. They have their free meal or whatever. They plan it for Saturday uh, when they're, when they're going to be away and, and they know that, yeah, maybe they're camping. We'll say they're camping and they're going to be doing, they're going to, you know, go hiking or they're going to go on a bike ride or they're going to do whatever activities and that aren't food focused. And they're like, well, why the hell wouldn't I just pack my meals? <laughs> and they're and and they and you know what? I'm like, awesome. You're fine. You know what? If that's what you want to do, that's obviously ideal because you're yeah. still following the plan. Of course, you know. Of course, me as a coach, I'm all for it. Um, and I'm like, that's great. And they're like, yeah, I'm gonna have my free meal. We're gonna we're gonna grill out on Saturday night. You know, we're gonna make food on the fire, or whatever. And maybe Sunday morning they're going to have a breakfast. And I'm like, cool. That is awesome. That is Uh good. You know, 
That's a good balance. You're not you're not gonna fucking set yourself back for a month. Absolutely. And, yep. And they're like, yeah, I'm still gonna have fun Saturday. What's it matter if I get food from the you know the store at the front of the campgrounds or if I get it out of my container? It's like we're not really doing you know we're we're hiking. I really don't care. It's right. just food, you know. So. I think when people when people can realize that this isn't a punishment, it's you know, it is a lifestyle and there are you have to adopt it as such. And it's the same with. It's then, there, you know what, there's competitors like that, too. They see. Yes, they've been competing, they've been competing forever, maybe freaking 10 plus years, 15 years. And and but they still they still cannot for the life of them have any productivity in the off season. Why? Because they see prep as some you know like i said the hold a gun to your head whole thing where they're they're hunkered down in the trenches and blah 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 blah. and you can all you have to do is look at their social media posts and you can tell that that's you know that that's what they're like and and then they're like you know i'm done with prep whatever i don't want to have to do that to myself anymore like oh that your mindset's just way Mm, off mm, yep so that's that's my rant on that topic. <laughs> it's good. I liked it. Um, I don't have anything else written down here for this one, man. That was great. Yeah, I'm good. I know we went off. We might have to change the title of our episode, but that's okay. <laughs> it would do. It would, it would just cut 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 your voice at the beginning. Put a robot in and say this one is all about everything, and then we'll just go into, into the podcast yeah. from there, right? Okay. There you go. Okay, well, boys and girls, thank you for listening to the Mind Body Broadcast, and we will be back with more new fun stuff next week.